Cravings seem to be the number one issue most people have when sticking to a healthful diet. In this video, I'm going to give you some of my best strategies I use with my weight loss clients to overcome this major obstacle. So first of all, I think it's important to kind of get a similar reference for what exactly dopamine is. So this is just a neurotransmitter that is released to reinforce some kind of behavior, ultimately leading to something pleasurable. When that dopamine is suddenly shifted or taken away, that's what happens when you have some sort of withdrawal or a food craving. So understanding that a food craving is really just your brain's response to receiving less of that dopamine that it's so conditioned to receiving. So say you always used to go home at a certain point in time and eat a bag of chips. So your brain is anticipating that pleasurable behavior day after day after day the more you expose yourself to it and the longer you do it. So suddenly taking that pleasurable thing away is going to cause this inevitable drop in dopamine levels. But what's great is that your brain works really hard to maintain homeostasis. So eventually that drop is going to come back to its level point and you're going to get plenty of pleasure from normal foods. All right, let's talk about how to eliminate these nasty cravings. So first and foremost, education is definitely a huge piece to this puzzle. The sooner you understand what the heck is going on in your body and with your biology, the better you're going to be able to equip yourself with the knowledge to move forward and get over these obnoxious cravings and stop ingesting whatever it is that's you know injuring that delicate neuronal balance to begin with. Acknowledging that cravings are temporary. Yes, you might feel like crap for a week or two, but as soon as those weeks are over, you can reset those neural pathways and then start enjoying normal healthful foods. This neuronal process is very similar to any other biological adaptation. So think of the analogy of walking into a dark theater. At first, you have a lot of difficulty seeing, but after a while, everything becomes apparent and your eyes adjust, things shift, and you can see your path. This is very similar. You just have to give your brain enough time to allow it to adapt. The big issue here is overcoming those short-term gains for long-term benefits. It is so easy to give into these cravings. We are animals. When we're cued by something in our environment or we have a tendency to always do something at a certain time or have a certain ritual around food or, oh, it's a wedding or it's some sort of vacation or we're traveling, like there's all these different situational cues that give us this permission to go ahead and indulge in these things that are really not supposed to be part of our day-to-day -day food consumption. I also find that explaining to people that this discomfort will pass whether or not you actually give into the craving is very powerful. So just being able to sit through that 20 minutes and deal with the discomfort, you will be on your way to never having to indulge in that thing again. And the more and more you practice this, the stronger you're creating that, neural, that new neural pathway in the brain. Soon it will be your new norm. You just have to give it enough time. The next strategy is probably my favorite. I think it's super neat. So we can improve natural dopamine stimulation by doing things like improving our social connectivity, spending more time with loved ones and friends and doing things that you enjoy or creating art, playing a musical instrument, engaging in some sort of hobby or a favorite pastime, nature, sunsets, sunshine. <laughs> reading stimulates dopamine and learning. So just by watching these YouTube videos, you are stimulating a little bit of dopamine, but in a natural response. You're not getting this major spike that you would have gotten had you turn to that ice cream in the freezer. If you're enjoying these strategies, make sure you subscribe to this channel. I have many more videos that allow you to put these things into practical applications. The next strategy I'm going to talk about are hormetic effects. Now these are beneficial biological responses to mild stressors in our environment. So things like exercise. Exercise is not fun when you overdo it. If you were to run a marathon and you were not used to the training, this is something that would be very, very uncomfortable for you and create more problems than benefits. But if you were to run a 5K, if you were completely conditioned to run a 5K, you would actually get a natural dopamine boost. Any sort of exercise that pushes you out of your comfort zone and makes you feel a little bit of discomfort is going to boost your dopamine in a healthy response. But we, hormetics are very finicky. You don't wanna overdo it to any extent. These are just mild stressors on our biology. 
Other hormetic effects that help to reset these pathways are things like cold showers. I know this sounds horribly uncomfortable. Personally, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm cold all the time and the last thing I wanna do is hop into a cold shower, but up to three minutes at a time, it's supposed to be super beneficial for resetting those dopamine pathways. Another hormetic effect is fasting. So mild calorie restriction. This is going to cause your body to shift into another natural state of mild stress. These are effective because we actually have a very similar area of the brain that controls for dopamine and pain. It's on this um, like teeter-totter effect. The more dopamine you get, the lower pain experience you experience. And the higher pain you experience, the lower dopamine you receive. This is beautifully illustrated in Dr. Anna Lumke's book, Dopamine Nation. It's a great read for anybody who hasn't been exposed to this material. The last hormetic effect are things like anxiety provoking situations. This one is super strange, but true nonetheless. So things like public speaking, going on dates, having uncomfortable phone conversations with a parent or a, you know, a loved one or doing your taxes or taking an exam. These are all things that bring us way outside of our comfort zone and do provide a little bit of discomfort. So again, you just want that little push of discomfort in order to gain more of that dopamine response. You don't want to focus too hard or too much on the discomfort end of things because then you'll actually get the opposite response. The fourth strategy is simply using your own awareness sitting with the sensation and acknowledging, okay, I'm having a craving. It's not the end of the world. It will pass. This can be also very powerful when you realize that this is just a sensation like every other sensation. It comes and it goes. And being able to get curious about your experience and just sort of acknowledge what's happening. How are you feeling? What happens if I don't give into that craving? What happens if I do give into that craving? And remember, whether or not you give in, the craving does pass in about 20 minutes. 30 minutes for some super predisposed individuals. Cravings are all a response to our biology. Our DNA actually determines how we experience cravings. So some people can experience a lot and some people experience none. It's very individualized. Personally, my sugar cravings were so off the wall. It took me months to overcome my sugar cravings by abstaining 100%. And that is obviously what I recommend in this video is completely abstaining from these things. The more you try to reduce periodically or use some kind of titration method like you would getting off of a drug, the more it just prolongs your suffering. <laughs> just rip off the bandaid. So some ways you can practice awareness are obviously meditation and journaling. Just being able to reset your mind in this way or target what it is that you're feeling and sensing. Getting in touch with that mind-body connection and acknowledging how your physical sensations are responding to your emotional experience is going to help you gain control over the situation. Other things you can do in the moment are simply just try to reset yourself. Get up from wherever you are, go to a different room, or better yet, go outside, get into a different environment. Sometimes that's all it takes is getting away from the cue that's creating the craving in the first place. A lot of my clients will just go for a short walk, get out in the sunshine, and it'll be completely reduced or eliminated by the time they get back. The last strategy you can use to get over your food cravings is just sort of a displacement strategy. So instead of giving into your candy bar, you give into an orange or some berries or a banana. This is helpful in the initial portion of your transition because yes, it is so much easier to exchange one drug for another, but at the same time, you have to acknowledge that at some point you're going to need to wean yourself off of the fruit as well. So using some of these other strategies in the, for the long-term benefits of getting over your cravings are going to be really helpful. And then using this short-term method during the initial portion of your transition is sometimes beneficial for people. But this is another way that you're just prolonging that reinforced behavior. So getting off the drug of choice, in this example it would be the candy bar, with another drug like the sweetness of an orange is not going to help you in the long-term. This is mostly due to the fact that you're still eating outside of your hunger drive. You're still responding to an internal cue that has nothing to do with nourishing your body or fueling your body. This is coming from a stimulation in your brain that is seeking pleasure, something that can definitely be satisfied through these other areas that we've discussed previously. 
And if you're having more difficulties getting rid of the salt than you are getting rid of the sweets, just keep in mind there are tons of different substitutions, healthful substitutions you can also use for salt until you feel you are able to get off that crutch completely. So these are things like kelp flakes or garlic powder, onion powder. You can even use spice. So things like cayenne pepper or red pepper flakes or jalapeno or different, um, different peppers to create that sense of heat in your mouth is going to provide a similar stimulation in your mouth, in your taste buds. I hope these tips were helpful. Getting over my sugar cravings is by far one of the hardest things I've ever had to do, but nonetheless, it's one of the proudest things <laughs> I have accomplished in my life. So having that clean, calm mind, not having to be preoccupied with constant obsessive thoughts about where I saw the last piece of candy or where I hid my chocolate bar, it is such a difficult way to live your life when you're constantly bombarded with thoughts of food. Artificially stimulating foods literally undermine our health and happiness. If you want more information on what Dr. Alan Goldhammer and Dr. Doug Lyle titled their book, The Pleasure Trap, then make sure you check that book out for more references. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.